This is going to be your guide for using Perserker in Pokemon Sword and Shield. This is a crazy Pokemon that has a lot of hype around it because of the Steely Spirit ability. This Pokemon and its allies Steel type moves have their base power multiplied by 1.5 times. So just free 50% damage on our stab which means we are doing over double damage. That is gonna hurt, but I have a huge problem with this ability because poor Delmize and Steelworker was introduced last generation and then just forgotten. All they had to do was buff Steelworker to work with allies, give that to Berserker, and then Delmize would be more viable, and I think everyone would be happy, because it's effectively the same thing. This Pokemon's attacking stat is multiplied by 1.5 times when using a Steel-type attack, so effectively giving Delmize triple stab without an extra weakness from Steel or something, but it doesn't really work out that way, and it would still work on a Steel-type Pokemon. So a lot of like weird things and interactions, but Steely Spirit is just better because it gives you something to do in doubles, where if you hit two Steel-type moves, it's going to be a lot of bonus damage. We have Battle Armor, makes sense for this Pokemon, cannot be struck by a critical hit, we're not going to be like tanky or setting up, so I don't think that matters too much. And then Tough Claws, this Pokemon's contact moves have their power multiplied by 1.3 times. Why settle for 1.3? We have 1.5 on the Steely Spirit. So this is Perserker. 70 hit points, we max it out. 110 attack, we max it out. Adamant Nature, we bulk out physical attacks. Special defense is pretty low, which we see on Steel types. And then we have a very low speed at that 50. So run a Brave Nature. By running the Brave Nature, we are going to be making that speed even lower. Zero IVs if possible. And then Gyro Ball is going to be insane amounts of damage with a Choice Band. So... We're effectively like a Dracovish Light or Dracovish that can get outsped and still one-shot an opponent. And that's why people like it. Like, we're just stacking damage. We can take a hit with our hit point investment, and then we go and blow something up. So, Gyro Ball, that's going to be massive damage. And here's where things get interesting. Because when it comes to any other coverage move, it's not worth it unless it's a super effective hit against something that resists us. Because let's go and take a look at the steel of typing. So right here we can see that offensively we are resisted by electric, fire, steel, and water. So let's say it's an like an electric type Pokemon and we hit it with a gyro ball. Well, that's going to be 2.25 times damage, cut in half because it's resist, so we're still doing over neutral 1x damage. So if we have 80 base power on the Jar Ball, or let's just make it Iron Head. So we have 80 base power on the Iron Head, well, let's go and look at some of the other moves that Berserker gets access to. We have Taunt, Home Claw, so that's really not, nothing offensive, Payback, Assurance, Fling, and there we go, Crunch. Alright, so Crunch is going to be 80 on the base power. Well, Iron Head is still going to have more damage than the Crunch, even when resisted, so it doesn't really matter, unless it's a super effective hit. But super effective Crunch, that's 2x damage, which is still going to be less than our 2.25 times damage. So it has to be something that hits super effective. Let's go back here. Fire, we don't get any access to water. Steel, we do have fighting. And then water, we do have grass. And that bounces back over here. So close combat against Steel-type Pokemon. Seed Bomb against Water-type Pokemon. And then you just go Gyro Ball or Iron Head against everything else, depending on the move option that you want. Reason why I have Gyro Ball is because we take out Sweepers. Gyro Ball... Choice Band, again, Steelworker does effectively the same thing. There isn't any listing for the Steely Spirit on the Trainer Tower damage calculation. So, we're getting accurate damage here. But anyway, so we come through. Gyro Ball is going to be just a massive hit. That even resisted, it KOs the Jolteon where Iron Head wouldn't. And this also shows like another weird interaction with the uh, close combat. So technically, you can close combat the Fire and Electro type Pokemon. You do have to take into consideration the defense drop and the extra damage that close combat has compared to other moves. So that is going to be like one of the only situations where it matters. And then we can look at some other Pokemon like the Dragapult. Iron Head even KOs it. Gyro Ball, it's well beyond over for this Pokemon. But we don't have a lot of special defense so the flamethrower can ko us that just kind of brings up like hey if you dynamax berserker you still have steely spirit you lose your choice band so like steely spirit kind of makes up for that and then we have a lot of damage with our max move getting stabbed and then still being able to one hit ko the opponent 
but it, it kind of creates these really weird interactions because if you Dynamax Berserker, you're either a three hit KO Pokemon, so you can score two KOs while in Dynamax, but again, it costs you your item and it creates a lot of weird interactions and stuff like that. And another problem with Berserker is that speed does come back to haunt us. As we can see here, the Jolteon is still going to be very big damage with a very, very small chance to KO us, even with full hit point investment. So even with full hit point investment, a lot of sweeper Pokemon, they hit us, they get KO'd, and then another faster Pokemon comes in and then finishes us off. So Berserker is a really good one-for-one -one Pokemon. So I guess the best thing you can do with Berserker is either use it as a revenge Pokemon, but that means you're still behind. You know, the opponent KOs one of your Pokemon, so you're at minus one, you bring in Berserker, you take a hit, you KO them, now you're even but now you have a weakened Berserker and the opponent just finishes you off. There's not going to be too many Pokemon that are slower than 50 base speed that aren't going to be full tank and maybe even try to set up against you. You know, if it's like Toxapex, you can't really do much against Toxapex. It can start setting up and you are choiced. So if they just bring in something that resists your last move, you're just going to have to eat it and now you're at minus one again. But you did deal with a sweeping threat. So Berserker just trades unless you lead with it. You lead Berserker, and then you just say, all right, I get to choose what I use, and then they die. And the Metal Burst is actually, like, a really good insurance policy that even though it isn't boosted by Steely, Spirit, or Choice Band, if you take over half your health, it actually has to be a little more than half your health because Metal Burst is only 1.5 times damage as opposed to Mirror Coat or Counter, which would be 2x damage. So, I mean, if you know a big hit is coming from, like, a Sweeper Pokemon or something like that, then you Metal Burst, you KO them. Anything else, Gyro Ball will do it, Close Combat, Seed Bomb, depending on the super effective in the coverage. So, you can just take out a Pokemon, and then they bring in a Pokemon. They have to deal with you. Like, you can't set up against Berserker, because then it's just too much damage, and you can't let it do that against you. So, then they bring a Sweeper Pokemon, they trade, and it's going to be a one-for-one. One. So, you can effectively just turn any battle into a 2v2 or a 5v5 if you choose to play it that way. And then it still works in double battles as well. Like, you just sit a Berserker in there, and then it's going to, like, you have to focus it, hopefully try to KO it, or just going to do a ton of damage and maybe even score KO, and then double battles become a 3v3, unless you have Trick Room. If you do, like, a Sacrifice Trick Room lead, then Berserker has a couple of turns of potential sweeping. Same thing in doubles, that, unfortunately, like, you need the Choice Band to milk as much damage out of this Pokemon. Now, if we show something like the Life Orb against the Dragapult, we do still have the KO, but it shows that, you know, Iron Head gets a little more dicey. That bulky Pokemon, defensive investment, any kind of tanky Pokemon, then we stop finding KOs, or then we start stop finding meaningful damage while we are losing health on the Life Orb. However, we're in doubles, so if you also have an ally that just, like, techs in a Steel-type Pokemon, they don't have to be Steel-type, because then that opens you up to a lot of weaknesses and stuff, but if they just have, like, a random Steel-type move to use for themselves, like, double Gyro Ball in Trick Room with Steely Spirit, it, the opponent is really not going to like that so that's an option that you can keep out there choice band or life orb and then you just keep a lot of pressure on the opponent that way and that makes it to where you're not just like a one-for-one -one crazy sacrifice damage dealing pokemon because like as we show with this uh jolteon it works in a lot of situations you know it's like even if this is a resisted hit we still find ko's against certain pokemon so that's really nice and then this right here is not a move set but i do want to have a discussion about some of the up other options that berserker gets because it's weird. I think Tough Claws is like the worst thing that Berserker could have gotten. It should have gotten Sheer Force. Sheer Force on this Pokemon would have been so cool because Life Orb doesn't do the 110th recoil when you're using a move affected by Sheer Force. So you're still getting a lot of damage. It's 1.3 instead of 1.5, but it's on all of your moves instead of only your Steel type moves. And in singles, you're not getting the extra effect of the uh, Steely Spirit, so it doesn't even matter. And while we are losing like Choice Band damage and the damage and does add up, like this is just more safety on the Berserker and it means you can Dynamax and just not have to worry about like Life Orb taking too much health because you have your double health and then you're still getting the bonus damage of Life Orb while Dynamax. So I mean like, if you want to run Dynamax Berserker, I think there's a lot better Pokemon on your team to Dynamax in more situations. That's when the Life Orb comes into play. And as we see from the damage calculations, um, I guess it's all right, like, if you sacrifice your Berserker to the Life Orb damage. Like, if you're a two-hit KO Pokemon anyways, it doesn't matter if you take 50% and then Life Orb burn and then another 50% or 90% Life Orb burn and then get KO'd by your own Life Orb. You're going to be trading for a KO like that. So, it does keep the Dynamax open and it does mean, like, if there's some weird interaction where if like you're not a two-hit KO Pokemon, which is harder because of life orb damage, or they have like a tanky Pokemon response, then you can mix it up and do something. So let's get back to talking about our not a move set. U-turn on the choice band is not worth it. 
that if you have to take a hit to U-turn out, you're just better off using Gyro Ball or Close Combat or Seed Bomb and trying to do more damage to the opponent. Because if Berserker takes a hit and then pieces out and then comes back in later in the battle against faster Pokemon, it dies for free. So that's a waste. That's a noob trap right there. Iron Head, we talked about it. You can run it instead of the Gyro Ball, but you do lose some KO potential against Pokemon like the Jolteon. And let's check out the Barrascuta, because this actually might get meaningful. Iron Head doesn't KO. Barrascuta does get KO'd by the Gyro Ball, so things to consider. So that takes care of Iron Head. Let's talk about Taunt, because it gets Taunt. There's just a lot of better, like, Taunt, Trapping, Wall Breaking, Anti-Setup Pokemon in the game that are just faster as well. I think we're too slow. Same thing for Swords Dance. Like, if we're trying to Wall Break by setting up Swords Dance and putting, like, high damage pressure on the opponent, we're too slow to really work against too many Pokemon, and there's just a lot better Swords Dance setup. So that just kind of says, like, here's Berserker. Here's how you use it. The good thing about Berserker, though, is that it's on-demand damage. You bring it in, if the opponent can't one-shot you, you likely one-hit KO them in return, and that can stop an otherwise dangerous Pokemon to your team, but that's kind of it. It does, like, high damage in doubles, it does high damage in singles, it's like Dreadnought with less setup and more damage, unless, like, Dreadnought gets rain and then starts popping off and stuff, or Swords Dance or whatever, so... You have, like, just a bulky, bruisery Pokemon. I guess since it's a Berserker base, you know, it's, it's kind of got that in it. It takes the hit, it nukes you, and then it's gone too reckless, and then it goes down. And that's Berserker. Still upset about Steelworker. You got some KOs, you got some high damage here, and it works against a lot of Pokemon. So, you guys, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.